Okay, welcome back to the channel everyone. And yes, we are back in the studio. And as the name of this video suggests, we're gonna attempt to discuss, well, something that nobody really wants to discuss. We're gonna give it a go. Right, so this video is gonna ask a lot of questions. And the first being, why isn't Live Golf being discussed on any YouTube channels? Well, I can tell you the simple answer is everyone is very much too scared to have an opinion because of what follows on. And that really leads me to question two, and that is why can't people have an amicable debate anymore? Because let's be honest, you simply can't. But we're gonna try and look at some of the major talking points surrounding the Live Tour and the impact it's had on golf. And the only opinion that I'm really interested in is yours right now. And I'm interested to see what that balanced opinion is. So please get involved in the comments. I expect this to be a busy one. So what I'd ask you to do is try and keep it clean, factual and non-abusive amongst each other. We're far more grown up than that. So if you're ready, buckle in. Right, do you watch Live Golf or are you just not prepared to give it a chance? If you have watched it, what are your thoughts on a three rounds, no cut, shotgun start kind of format? What about the team event? Is that a good idea? It was introduced in cricket, it seems to work well. And that idea of supporting a team rather than an individual, I wonder will kids start wearing a team shirt? Does the format actually engage a younger audience? What about the impact it's had on the game? Has it diminished the PGA Tour as they suggest, or the DP Tour, or has one affected more than the other? Has the DP Tour become a feeder tour, which is also the opinion of many? Is Keith Pelly the right man to be leading the European Tour and Jay Moynihan getting it right for PGA Tour? Why have the PGA introduced new formats into the programme? Which seem to be events that bring greater riches again to the elite. Is that really best for the game of golf or have they gone down the route of effectively copying some what Liv have done? A lot of play people said that Liv attracted players that were sort of past their best. So why is there any concern about losing them to another tour? But then Cam Smith and others who have followed are clearly not past their best golfers. They are in fact, in his case, open champion. So has the landscape changed even in recent weeks? And is your the general opinion of Liv changing? And what are your thoughts on golfers reacting to each other? Previous Ryder Cup teammates now seem to have completely fallen out with each other. Is that a good way to behave? Is it really showing golf in a good light? I asked myself, are Rory and Co. right to take a swipe at any opportunity at the Live Tour and its players? When top European golfers became successful on the European Tour, they would often jump ship and play on a PGA Tour at the first opportunity, thus effectively weakening the tour it left behind. And I would have assumed they did that for financial reasons. So I asked myself how that differs from, well, leaving the PGA Tour to go to the Live. The one question that seems to be fading is the human rights issue. Is that not a worrying fact that the question is being now overlooked and seems to be dominated by questions that we've just raised so far? Now finally, I hear how the introduction of Live is detrimental to the game of golf. I think we should all remember that it only impacts on professional golf. I recently paid a visit to what golf really looks like to most of us. Right, this morning I am down in North Wales. I'm at Betsy Coed Golf Club. It's a nine hole golf course. It looks pretty idyllic in terms of the surroundings, but it got me thinking that um, we hear a lot about lately about golf tours and how they affect the game of golf. Well, let me tell you, this is what real golf looks like for most people that play the game, at least anyway. It's a Monday morning, the clubhouse is shut, but somebody's come down and opened the changing rooms. There's an honesty box where you put your green fee in and you go out there and you enjoy the game of golf. And this is what real golf actually looks like. It's grassroots and these kind of clubs need help and they need exposure to try and get more people to come and play here and keep this whole thing going. Because at the end of the day, it's rather tiresome to hear how uh, multi-million pound tours are affecting or being affected by at least uh, the arguments that are going on right now and affecting the game of golf. They don't because this is what real golf looks like. And we're about to go and film it and uh, give it some exposure and hopefully get a few more people coming down and visiting and playing this golf course and helping it uh, keep open because it really is absolutely stunning to look at. So I will leave it there. I have uh, little personal opinion, only that I'm not comfortable with the way humans behave anymore, whether you are for or against live golf. Can people just not so show some decency instead of descending into vile abuse? 
I would also prefer it if professionals could retain some dignity and show a little respect to one another, especially former teammates, and stop the sly digs, which I find a little bit childish. But we all know that is not the world we live in right now. So be nice people, get your comments in below because I am really interested to know your thoughts. And like I said at the beginning of the video, try and keep it clean, keep it polite and keep it balanced. Just give a, an opinion that's based on fact and not just one that sort of throws abuse at people. I have no idea why that is the only way people can express an opinion nowadays. Right, it's a short and sweet video. It's not one that I expected to be making. And like I said, I avoid the conversation as much as anybody else does on, uh, on YouTube or social media, to be quite honest with you. But there is such a lot that surrounds Live Golf right now. It seems that we're kind of ducking away from it if we don't raise it and create a video and uh, throw it out there for you to have an opinion on. So uh, I hope you... I don't think you enjoyed the video, the, uh, the right word to use, but I hope you appreciated the video. And uh, as I said, get involved in those comments. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you all soon. Take it easy.